Hey, 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 everybody. How we doing? Hope everyone is having a good Thursday and getting everything ready for Mother's Day right around the corner. Um, hope everyone's uh, gearing up for a very successful holiday again. Um, so first thing, let me know in the comments if you can hear me and see me and all that good stuff. And let me go make sure I am showing up here. All righty. Awesome. Yes to both. Awesome. Good afternoon. Thanks for all the help. No problem. We are happy to help anytime. Uh, quite a few Facebook users coming in. Make sure to go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Let me put it in here. That will give StreamYard permission so that I can see your name. So when you leave a comment, I know who you are. So if you can go there, that will help out. Uh, yeah, so today we had several people submit designs for us to recreate in Anywhere POD. So we have a few of those that we are going to do today. Um, I think I've got, let me see, I've got four right now. So we'll see how long those take. Um, if you guys uh, think of anything else while we're chatting, let me know. I'll, you can send me a link. I'll add it to the list. If it's a Canva template, sometimes we can put those together a little bit faster. Um, but we have some today that, you know, we don't even have the template and stuff set up for it that we're just going to kind of create together. Um, so we'll work on that. Um, yeah, so uh, that is the plan. So yeah, I was saying send those over. Um, if you have them, uh, we can add them to the list. If we don't get it to it today, we can always do it another day. Um, of course, as always, feel free to ask questions along the way as we go. Uh, and then we'll have some time at the end to answer any other questions you might have about um, Anywhere POD or Etsy or Shopify or anything else uh, related there. Um, Yes, Jill, I see your name. Can I remember that? Hey, I see your name as well. So we're all set. You guys are good to go. All right. Let me get opened up here. Move you over here. And we'll open this one. Okay. Yes, you are in. I see you. Uh, all right, let's find. That's not what I want. Find my right file here. All right, let's share a screen and we will jump in and get started on our first design here. Uh, this design is one that looks a bit complicated. Uh, yes, there should be sound playing. Maybe come out and jump back in. Um, although you can't hear me. So let's see. Can I post? Yeah, if someone could just reply to her comment for me so I don't have to jump back over to uh, Facebook. StreamYard is not letting me post a comment straight to Facebook. So uh, maybe if you go out and come back in, uh, you can get that to come back up. Uh, okay, so I should be sharing my screen here. So this is one. It looks a little bit more complicated than what it is, but I think it's going to be uh, pretty easy to set up. So we've got uh, this is for a blanket. So this is kind of a memorial blanket here. Um, and if we scroll down, we have this in different colors. So we've got a brown, a black. Um, just maybe call that a purple. So we may not set up every color, but I'll show you at least how to do a couple of these. Um, and again, I haven't run through this example. So there's a couple of different ways that we could do this. Um, I think the easiest thing to do, though, is going to be to download uh, these, I guess it'd be odd number pages. So if I download page one 
and four and seven and 10. Um, I can download those just as one design. And then each of my images will just go inside of each of these individual boxes here. And I should just be able to reuse that and swap out that main image and it be all set and ready to go. If I was doing this on Printify, uh, I would consider doing this using possibly using clip art options. Um, but I think it's probably going to be best to set actually. Uh, yeah, I suppose I could. Does our text color change? If our text color changes, it does. So since our text color changes, um, I would definitely do it. Uh, just as part of the design, which is kind of how I was planning on setting that up. Anyway, you might notice on a couple of these, it looks like our positioning of kind of the wing part of the heart here is a little bit different on each one. So I would correct that so that those are positioned the same way. There you can see this one is smaller. It's like right at the heart. And then if I come up here at the top, you can see my wings kind of sticking up from the heart. So I would try to figure out a way I could position those so they are um, all uniform and the same. Um, and let's see, we got some fonts here. I may not have this specific font inside of Anywhere POD. Um, so I would try to find that font or one that is similar to it that I can download and then upload to use in Anywhere POD. Um, OK, so in this case, what I want to do, so we've got three different image sizes here. Um, I might change that to actually. So I would probably set this. And my layout might be off if I do that. So what, what I would try to do if I was designing this from scratch, um, I would try to make my top row of images here and my bottom row of images the same size. That way I can reuse my uh, my images that I'm going to need for that. Um, so in this case, we have three different image sizes. I've got this top row, and I've got the two here in the middle row, and then I've got my bottom row. Um, so two options here that I could do. Um, I think what I'm going to try to do is drop in. Yeah, I think I would drop in. So I could either export um, this object as its own layer, um, or I could put in a frame here, and then I can get an image that I can export that is in the right size. So uh, I guess I could kind of show you how to do both. So the first one I would do is probably going to be um, probably the preferred method would be to drop in a frame here. So I'm going to come down to my frames. And let's see, are these should be resizable. So can I go, yeah, height two. Um, so depending on how you wanted to do this, if I zoom in here a little bit, I want my frame. It probably doesn't matter a whole lot if it's extending. You can see there's this uh, overlap here, um, this brown kind of border here. Um, so I'm going to go just on the inside of that. That way, when the customer crops their photo, um, yeah, that way when the customer crops their photo, nothing's going to be cut off. So it's going to be the exact image that they have cropped is going to gonna fit right inside of there. Um, so we've got first one there. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and bring it down for my next one. Uh, let's go to our layers list and see, am I able to turn off? I was thinking maybe there would be a way to hide that, but I guess there's not. So I'm just going to drop it wrong way. I'm going to drop it down behind for now so that I can see uh, how this is laying out so I can get it lined up like I just did the last one here. Looks pretty good. Okay, so that one's good. So I'll duplicate this one more time. And 
and it's kind of wanting to snap a little bit funny there, but there, I think I got it. And okay, so there we have those three sized the way we want it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. So I'm going to export these individually, and then I'm going to get rid of them when I actually export my design because I just need those once. So let me zoom back out here. And okay, so now what I'm going to do is I've got some images on my computer. I'm just going to upload those here to use. So we'll drop a demo into each one of these. So if I was doing this, I don't want to sit here and you guys just watch me do the same thing um, three times in a row. So uh, if I was uh, designing this from scratch, I would do this with a different picture for each box that I have here so that um, I have images that I can use when I build this in anywhere POD that will make my mockups look complete. Um, so let me see, is there... I don't know if I could change my, I want to change my width here a little bit. There we go, right here. So let's see what happens if we go 407. I noticed when I was selecting off the image, I don't know if you can see it, there's just a little bit, this needs to be just a little bit wider here. Uh, and that is, There we go. That's a little better. Okay, so I would go through and do that for each one. Um, so now I want to download each of these images in their frame and size so I can use them in Anywhere POD. So to do that, I'm going to do the trick like I showed you guys, I don't remember if it was last week or week before, where we put a transparent rectangle over the top of our image so we can download it. So I just hit R on my keyboard which gave me a rectangle. And then I'm gonna click here on the color at the top and select that to be transparent. And then I'm gonna select both of these layers and I can right click and go to download selection with transparent background and we'll hit download. So there's our first one. And then I'm just gonna grab this transparent box and move it down here and select them both again, and we will download that. And then one more time for our last one down here at the bottom. Download selection, transparent. Okay, so now we have those three images. So now I can remove these images from my design here. Uh, let's see, I want to delete both and here as well, delete both. Okay. So now, um, I guess we need to remove our name and date here as well, because those are going to be personalized and we'll add those in anywhere POD. So I'm going to go to share. We're going to go to download and I don't want to download all pages. I want, let's see. Let's uncheck all of them. And then I want page one. Um, you know what? Before I download, I probably need to remove the name from these other pages here too. Delete. And let's just do three of them. So we have those three. Okay. Now we can go to download and page one, page four can be my black and then page seven. Okay, so we'll hit download, transparent background, download. We will let those complete here. Uh, I see question, which size canvas are we using? So this was a template that was already created. 
Um, but to get the actual size that I want, what I would do is go to the product that you're going to create. So if we're going to blankets here, say we're doing a custom cat blanket here, 60 by 80. So these are the dimensions that you want to create in. Um, now, uh, Canva is not going to let you create a uh, image that is that size. They're not going to let you use those dimensions because Canva has limitations on the dimension, how big you can go. So what I would do in that case is take these dimensions and cut them in two. So like this would be, was that 4,727 is the first one. So um, you would use that dimensions cut in half when you create it in Canva. And then when you go to download your design, you can set a size here. So here you could set, and actually that's probably what's happened here because I see these are smaller. So you'd want to either two or three X this design. Um, and then you're going to get the larger file download that you need. So you're not losing any, uh, any quality there. Okay. Let me go unzip these files real quick. I think, or did it give them? Yeah. Let me unzip, unzip these real fast with my four pages. Okay. So now what we're going to do here in Anywhere POD, we're going to create our first one. So um, let me just refresh so I get the pop up here. We'll go to upload artwork. And I'm just going to download uh, or upload our page one here. So there we have our design that we just did. And so it looks like the original template for this was maybe sized slightly incorrect. You can see I've got a bit of a border here on the outside. Um, uh, yeah, there you can see it's extending out kind of in a funny way uh, where I don't have any color there. So this brown here should extend all the way out. Um, so that's just kind of how the design is set up. So I think you can set that as a background color in um, Canva, and then that would take care of that. Let me remove this comment that I always forget to do. OK, so we're back here in Anywhere POD. Um, so now I need to add in my images and my uh, text fields here. So. Um, what we're going to do is add our images first. So I'm going to go to those three images that I downloaded. Um, and I must have missed one because I only see two of them here. I don't see my third one. So we'll set up these first two and then see what's going on with our third. So we've got our image here. I'm just going to get this aligned and positioned and everything should just pretty much line up because my image was kind of already set inside of Canva to be the right uh, the right way around. So we're going to put that there. We're going to mark it as personalized. Our image is already the right shape. So we can just enable our image cropper. We don't need to upload a specific image for our cropped custom shape. It's just going to take care of it for us. So we're just going to duplicate this now. Two more times. Again, I would use, I would create a separate image for each one of these um, inside of Canva and download each one individually so that I have, you know, a, a mock up that looks good to the customer um, instead of using the same image over and over. Okay, now I think this should be the shape of our bottom one here. There we go. So we'll do the same thing here. Duplicate that two more times to get that lined up. All right, so we're set there. So now I just need to go, I didn't get this. So I told you the other thing you could do is use this layer um, as a image placeholder to use for the image cropper. 
So if we wanted to do that, instead of using, again, I think if you're, if you're in Canva using those picture frames are going to be easier, but if you wanted to use this, you could. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for this one. So what we want to do here is, why is it not giving me a rectangle? Let's go back to elements. Well, okay. Come on. There we go. Here is square rectangle here. So uh, we're going to make this color transparent. We are going to select both of these images. So I've got this smaller frame here and I've got my transparent rectangle. We're going to go right click download selection. Now this time what I'm actually going to do is turn transparency off because I want the center to be white so that I can use it as part of my image cropper. So we're going to just hit download on that. And that's downloaded now. So here, what we're going to do is the first image that we're going to upload is going to be the actual placeholder image that we want to use. So I will just select one here. Like so, but this is obviously not in the right size, right? So we're going to go to personalized. We're going to say crop to custom shape. And then we're going to download the image that we just now downloaded from Canva. And there we go. So we see we get our cropper and this gets uh, laid out perfectly so we can select what portion of the image we want to select. And now this image should fit right inside of... There we go. So that'll fit right inside of our box there. So we'll go ahead and do that one more time. So we're going to select our another placeholder image. It's going to be moving down here. Mark personalized, cropped custom shape. And now we're going to upload our rectangle that we got out of Canva. Okay, select that. And we'll have this line up again. All right, so there is all of our images set up now. Um, now you're probably looking and saying, well, that looks weird because we've got all of our images right now sitting on top of our artwork. We want to move our images so they're behind our artwork, and then that'll have everything kind of frame out and work correctly. Um, so I built it like this with everything on top. So now all I need to do is grab my artwork, which is this one here at the bottom, and we'll move that to the very top. And why did that artwork not download with transparency? Did I mess that up when I downloaded it? Or uh, are these frames already? So we've got border color, color. Ah, they're set to white. And then there's color behind it. Darn it. Okay. That just got a little bit harder to only do inside of Canva, uh, but we can still do it with Photo P. So, and there may be an easier way to do this in Canva. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not uh, necessarily a Canva pro. Come on, Photo P. Um, but I know how we can do this pretty easily inside of Photo P. So let's grab our first one here. Um, so maybe we can fix our background here as well. I won't worry about it right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go to my magic wand tool here. And if I click inside of this square box, you can see it's just going to select this square. 
Uh, and instead of doing it on each one, I think if I uncheck this box, yep, there we go. So if I uncheck contiguous, then when I click inside of here, you can see each box here is selected. Uh, yep, yep. And it's selecting like the inside of the heart here where it um, overlaps with the image. So the image will show through there as well. So I've got all those selected. Now all I need to do is hit delete on my keyboard and it just made all of those areas transparent. So I can now go to export as PNG. We'll name this transparent brown to keep track of it. Okay, now I'm gonna close this one out and we'll do this with one more so that I can show you guys how easy it is to add in each of these different colors. So we got this one here. We're already on our magic wand and our settings are correct. So I should be able to just click here, hit delete, and it's good to go. So we'll go to export PNG. And this one's going to be transparent black. OK, so we got those two images saved now. So I'm going to replace this artwork here with the one that I just downloaded for transparent brown. And it'll just put it right in the exact same position where it was. Um, so everything kind of lays out there still correctly the way that it should. So everything's good there. Uh, I think the only other piece I need is our text field names here. Uh, let me see what font this was, just so I can double check if we... There we go. Quiska. I'm guessing we're probably not going to have that font, so we'll just find... Yeah. We'll just use a script font for now. You could find that uh, that font and download it and use it. Um, but in this case, we're just going to roll with this one here. All right, let's shrink that down just a little bit so it fits here. And we want this to be the same brown as our border in our design here. So if I click into the color field, that now becomes a color picker. So if I click over here, it's going to just select that uh, correct color font for us. So I would do that, do the same thing for a date. It had a date underneath of it. Um, and then that one should be set up and good to go. We'll mark it as personalized and go to create product. So we've got our brown design here all set up and ready to go. If we wanted to add additional sizes like the um, uh, 30 by 40, we could go in and add that, do any of those changes that we want to do. Um, in this case, we want to change our color to be brown. And then what we'll do is come here and go to, let me make sure that our... That's taking a bit to generate here. So now we'll go to add variants. Um, so this is going to drop us back into our blanket category. We can go to our same blanket here. Go to start designing. And now instead of uploading, what we want to do is go to add from library because we've already got everything configured here. All we want to do is change our color. So we can click on the last one that we just did. And that's going to preload that design with all of the work that we already did already preloaded for us. So all we need to do now is come down here, go to our artwork here, and we'll upload our transparent black file here. That swaps that out, and then we'll change our font color to be black here as well. No, nope, that wasn't black. What did I click on here? We'll just click here. There we go. So font is black. All we need to do is click update product. And just like that, 
we have the second variation for this done. So we saw in our Canva template, this had three or four different colors where all of the colors on the design changed. Since all those are laid out the same way, all we need to do is click on that add variance and come in here, change this to black now as well. So it matches. And just like that, we have our black and brown variation added and available for this product. Um, very easily, very simply, we've got all of our uh, croppers set up. So whatever the customer uploads, it's all going to lay out uh, correctly and should be uh, all set for us. So uh, what do you guys think? Any questions on this? I know this one was a little bit more involved, but I wanted to make sure you guys saw the uh, how you could go through and do that. Any questions on blankets, photo uploads, any of that type of stuff? Okay. Sounds like we don't have any questions, so we will move on to the next one. Um, okay, so the next one that we have here... Give me just one second. Okay, so the next one that we have um, is this type of design for Mother's Day on uh, heart acrylic, um, where it just has the name mom at the top and then the teddy bears at the bottom with the name uh, inside of the teddy bears. It should be a pretty simple um, design to set up. I think the biggest thing with, with this one is really just going to be finding the, the right elements for the bears. Fairly simple design, though, um, so it should be pretty easy to set up. Um, so there's not a whole lot of... Let's see, I guess there's this bear here. Most of the stuff here is going to be... Yeah, I think I would probably so you could either set this up where you get each individual bear and download each individual one and build it easily inside of anywhere POD that way, or you can create the whole design inside of Canva. Um, I think we'll probably go the second route on this one. We could go could go either way on that. Um, so let's let's go ahead and do it in Canva. So to do that, uh, we're going to go to an anywhere POD first. We want to get the dimensions that we need for the acrylic that we're going to build. So we're going to come into Shine On and go to their acrylics. And we're going to take a look at the acrylic heart plaque here. Uh, okay. So I guess the other thing we're going to need here is probably this uh, template for Shine On as well. So what we need here is 2941 by 2941. Okay. So let's also go to we're going to go here to Canto and go to our templates and we're going to find our acrylics here acrylic heart no base because we want we want to download our template here so we can use that uh, inside of Canva as well. So we're going to hit download here. Um, you can see the dimensions are listed here as well. So we're going to go ahead and download that. And while that's downloading, we're going to go to create new design, custom size, 2941. Okay, so we have our new design here, and then we're just going to drop in our template here. It's going to load for me. There we go. So there is our template from Shine On. So we'll just want to make sure to delete this layer before we download our design. Uh, so our design is going to kind of be the opposite of what our example was, but we're going to go ahead and add a page here because I'm going to grab 
this image and we're going to put it down here just so we have kind of our reference point of kind of the design um, that we're going for. So it's going to kind of be the opposite because our heart for the hearts for shine on are faced the a different way than what the heart for this example is. Uh, so starting off, we just need some text here. Let's see. And I'm not going to, again, not spend forever going through fonts, but that's actually pretty darn close to the one that they were using. Okay, so we got mom at the top here, and I think this was, yeah, more of like a red color. It looks a little bit funny with that shine on template in the background, um, but I think it'll... I think that's probably about right once we remove that. Okay, so now we need a bigger bear in the background, and then we need uh, three bears here. You'd probably want to do this design where they had the choice if they wanted to pick uh, between one and four or five bears or something like that, since this is for Mother's Day. Uh, so to do that, we're going to come over to Elements, and we're going to go to... Search our graphics here. Let's see, Teddy Bear with Heart, I think brought up some good ones earlier. So I would just scroll through here and find ones you can see. There's quite a few here that are pretty similar to what we have here. Um, so what I'd be looking for here, probably one of these that's holding a heart. Like that one's pretty good. You want to make sure there's enough room to be able to put in your uh, the name uh, here as well, like inside of the heart. Like this one probably probably wouldn't work as well because the, the arms are coming around the heart a little too much. So I think probably this one, or I kind of like this watercolor one. Let's see. I kind of like that watercolor looking one, especially... This one looks like it might be a good match to go for the bigger one. So let's kind of see what that looks like. So we're going to bring that down. And we'll duplicate that. And we'll just go ahead and do one with three here. And then we want our bigger bear here. It'll kind of be in the background, so we need to move that layer let's see looks like it's this one here there we go so that one's kind of in the background and then i think our front bear remove that so in this one our uh, front bear looks a little bit smaller and then these two side ones are a little bit bigger you can kind of play with that a little bit so that um they're sized and look good it could also be kind of cool to have them get a little bit bigger um, because you have to think, uh, you know, they're probably siblings, so having different sizes probably wouldn't be bad here either. So if we made these two a little bit smaller, maybe this one, where it kind of stair steps up, might work well. The other design didn't do that. Uh, it just kind of had the one bear uh, a little bit different size, so it sat a little bit different. Um, and then it looks like they also use some bears that are facing in a little bit different way. So I'd probably spend some time trying to see if I could find uh, some other bears that are positioned a little differently if I wanted to match that de design exactly. Now, I think we probably don't need... Get rid of you all together. Oh, I see it added that as a separate layer. And then there's our background. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's our basic design. We'll add in our personalized text fields uh, inside of Anywhere POD. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that looks, uh, looks pretty good for this one for now. So we'll go to 
download here, make sure to turn back on our transparency and we only need the first page. So we'll download that and come over to anywhere POD, upload that here. All right, so now we should be able to maximize that. And since we designed that on our template, everything just kind of lays out the way that we want it. So we'll add in our text fields here. I would maybe have wanted to make all these barriers a little bit bigger. This is going to get to be a pretty small text field down here. So probably would have wanted to make these bears a little bit bigger. We've got a little bit of room. We could have kind of shifted everything over and, and made it bigger. Uh, what? So that looks pretty good for the color. Uh, I think we're probably going to want to stick with a darker color. Uh, maybe we would want, how's it look if we, yeah, that looks pretty good if we match the, uh, the color of the font in there. So we'll say this is Jack. And personalized. Okay, we'll duplicate that. This one maybe could be slightly larger here. Okay. And one more over here. All right, we'll say this is what we got, Mark, and personalize. And there we go. That one should be all set for us now if we go to create product. Go ahead. If you guys have more questions, this will probably be our last demo, and we'll go ahead and um, spend the next few minutes answering some questions. So if you guys have questions, there's anything else you want to see, um, anything else at all, uh, leave that in the comments. And we'll be happy to uh, walk through anything else with you guys as well. Uh, let's go through and get a couple more mock-ups here for this guy. And on this one, uh, I would probably also, like I mentioned, um, and I can walk through an example of this if you guys want. Let me know in the comments. Um, but I would probably also do one with like two bears uh, and probably one with four bears, maybe one with just a single bear so that uh, no matter how many kids they have, you're able to uh, uh, show all those. I kind of like the way that stair steps up. I think that design actually turned out pretty good. Uh, there we go. So there's, uh, there's that one for us. So tell me guys, what questions do you guys have? Questions, comments, please show that. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. We can do two bears. It'll be pretty similar to what we just did with the blanket of, uh, adding that. Uh, what we're going to do is just, we're going to remove one of those bears and we'll shift this around. So things are a little bit more centered again, maybe something like that. I probably wouldn't make these too much bigger, but I'm curious how much better names are going to fit in there by making it larger. Uh, sometimes with certain designs, as you get down in numbers, like if I was going to do this with one bear, it would probably look um, kind of odd just having the one big bear with one small bear in the front. So I'd maybe look at some other design elements, maybe some hearts or something like that, that we could add around the bear to kind of fill out the rest of the heart so that it looked a little bit better. Um, so I would consider doing that as we get down uh, smaller in numbers. Um, but in this case, we're just going to go with two bears there and we'll download that. Current page, download. Okay, 
now we're going to jump back over to anywhere POD. Um, now here, all of these are going to be an acrylic heart, so it doesn't really matter on our color. I probably change this to be uh, like number of names or number of children. And save that. Oh, I meant to put it in. So this was our three. Hit save. Okay. And then here we're going to go to add variants. And we're going to select the same product, just the acrylic heart. Again, instead of going to um, upload artwork, we're going to do add from library. And select the last design that we just did. And we're just going to upload our new artwork that we just downloaded with the two bears on it. And then we're going to remove Mark from our design. And then we're just going to reposition Jack and Mary here. So they're on the bears how we want them. And go to update product. And now we have the two bear option added. Uh, you can always double check that. If you guys are combining variants like this and checking that, um, you can always click here. We've got this show hide columns uh, that has various things that um, can be handy to turn on and off depending on what you're looking at. So we can turn on our artwork here and we can see uh, three bear, which we know we already added it here. Then we can make this one for two names and hit save. And there we go. That one is all set now with three and two. Um, if we wanted to take a look at this in Shopify, we can push it over there, enable our live previews. And we'll go view on Shopify. Uh, yeah, so if the child's name was really long uh, or much longer, yes, that would start to have an issue. Um, I would probably look for making the bear larger so that it can fit longer names. Um, and that would probably take care of it. So if you rearrange this design a little bit, um, that wouldn't be too hard to make an adjustment for, uh, because you'll see, uh, I think this was the smallest one. If you enter a really long name, that text is going to get really, really small on you. Um, so I would look at, you know, maybe this text here, that's still fairly small. If we made this bear a little bit bigger and that was our smallest bear and we stepped up from there. We do have still extra room down here at the bottom to be able to get all that to fit, or we could look for uh, different bears or a better way to uh, to be able to fit in a longer name. But yes, you are correct on that. Ah, uh, yes, thank you for the reminder on setting up personalization blocks. So um, couple things that I can cover on the personalization options inside of uh, Shopify when you set that up. So the first one is if you have not enabled um, the personalization block, when you first installed Anywhere POD, the first page you came to in Anywhere POD had a list of instructions and a link to be able to help set that up. Um, you can either reach out to support and we can help get that set up for you. Or if you come into your product and go to your theme template section, you can click on view template here. And that's going to open up the template for you uh, inside of your theme that you're using. And then all you need to do is click on add block over here on the left, go to apps, and then just select anywhere POD personalization. And it's going to drop it in here at the very bottom for you. And you'll just want to take that and move it up to the spot where it goes. Um, which is generally, uh, I like to put it just above the quantity selector. So they're selecting their variants and then they're selecting, entering their uh, personalization and then how many do you want to buy type of thing. 
I'll turn that off. So you just need to move that up there and hit save and you have it added. If you have more than one product template, um, you can click this drop down here and go to products. So a lot of times you'll have uh, like if you're selling shine on uh, and are using their shine on template, that exact same process works with the shine on fast template. So you can add it there. Uh, they do have like a shine on upsell template um, that is like a, a custom coded theme that this doesn't work on. Um, you don't have, you won't see all these selections over here. Um, so just be aware of that. And then the only other thing that you're going to want to make sure that you turn on in Shopify is here under app embeds. There's a toggle he toggle here for anywhere POD. You want to make sure to turn that on. What that does is when you're using the live preview and they add a product to their cart that updates the thumbnail that is in the cart so that it shows their preview options inside of the cart as well. So those are the two places you want to enable it. The personalization block here on the product theme and then also that app embed so that it shows in the cart correctly. If you have any problems at all getting that set up or you're not sure you want us to check it. Definitely feel free, reach out to us at uh, support and um, we can take a look at it for you or we can request a collaborator account to, to get in and, and help get that set up. So uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us if you need any help on that. So hopefully that helps there a little bit as well. All righty. Uh, do you have to do the app embed for each product? No, that is just a one-time thing that you just have to turn on for your theme. So all of this, the the app block that you add here, um, we show a little preview of like the three options that you can get. So like the text input, the file upload, this is going to dynamically change though for each product. So if you have uh, text personalization, however many fields, if you're doing clip art, it's going to automatically update and show the correct options for that product or show the personalization button. Um, so all that is just dynamic and will happen automatically. And same with the app embed, you just need to turn it on that once and it'll show up in the cart for any products that you have live preview turned on for. Um, and yes, it will, again, it'll only show up for products that are personalized. So if I'm building non-personalized products in anywhere POD and I push those to my Shopify store, nothing's going to show here um, for that particular product when I view it on the storefront. In the designer, you're always going to see it here. That way you don't have to try to hunt through and find the right product and um, make sure it has personalization options to see where it's going to place it and all that sort of thing. Um, but on the actual customer product view, um, It'll be dynamic. It'll only show the options that you have set up in your artwork for that product. So hopefully that helps clear that up. Alrighty. What other questions do we have? We still have a few minutes. If you guys have any other questions or want to see anything else, let me know in the comments and we'd be happy to, uh, to help out. How was this today? Was this, did you guys find this useful? Um, was it too repetitive from last week? What do you guys think? Let me know. Uh, your feedback helps us. You know, I want to make sure that we're giving you guys the most value that we can during these live streams. Um, so if, if this isn't helpful or is only helpful for some of you, um, you know, we can split off and do multiple different types of live streams if we need to or whatever. So if you have, any comments or anything like that, we uh, would love to hear uh, any of those comments as well. Thank you. Very helpful. I love these live meetings. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Um, and a tea launch mug. If you forget to put a check mark in left and right images, is there a way to go back? And, or do we need to delete? Yeah. Unfortunately, right now you need to delete and restart. I don't like that. Um, but there's not a way right now to be able to add a print position after you already have the product created. So you do need to click that left and right. Um, or if you use their full wrap images, um, we'll automatically duplicate 
your image on both sides. So if you're doing the only downside to the full wrap that I don't like is that they have uh, on their mugs. Uh, where's my mug category? Here we go. Home and living mugs. The only thing I don't like on how they have their full wrap mugs loaded in is that they have each accent color as its own product. I'm not really sure why it's set up that way, um, but that's how they have their product. So it's a little bit frustrating. But so if I find. There we go. So if I'm doing a full wrap mug and I have this mirror image on both sides set up, I can upload my image once add my personalization once here. And it's going to automatically duplicate that on both sides of the mug for me um, without having to upload twice or have multiple personalization fields or things of that nature. Um, hide that. So that can be... Uh, a bit of a benefit there doing it that way and using our automatic duplication. Again, the only problem with how they have each color set up is you would need to do an add variant. You'd be able to just select the same artwork that you're already using. So you wouldn't have to like recreate. Um, but that's kind of the trade off for that. That really only applies to T launch. They're the only ones that have their products separated like that. Uh, all righty. Priceless, thank you. Very useful. Awesome. Great. I am very glad you guys are getting good use out of this. If you guys ever have other ideas for topics, um, I think these product building live streams are beneficial and we're happy to do that. Um, if, you, if there's ever a specific topic that um, you think would be good for us to deep dive into or other information that, that you would like, um, feel free to, to share that with us. We're always looking for more ideas. It's going to be as useful to you guys as possible. Um, stuck on variants, so this helped. Great, great. I'm glad that's probably, I would say, probably our second uh, most beneficial, most popular feature is the ability to do that add variants. Um, and it really can make some dynamic products that way pretty easily without a lot of extra time, but still adding a lot of extra options that the customers can select especially for Etsy where you're you're limited on what you can show. Um, you're kind of able to use that variant drop down as a level of personalization um, just natively right inside of Etsy, which is is really great. Um, working on personalized birth flower journals. Do I have to create 12 different variants? Uh, let me know real quick. Are you selling on Etsy or are you selling on Shopify? Uh, I can kind of talk through each option, uh, but let me know which one you're doing. Uh, don't think it's repetitive. Perfect. Okay, cool. So um, on the birth flower design, yeah, so if you're doing it on Shopify, probably the easiest way to do that would be to use the uh, clip art library. So you have two options there. You can either go through and create it similar to how you saw today with the with the blanket. Create your first one with one flower, hit add variants, add your second option. In that scenario, the customer would select. So this open. Yeah. In that scenario, the customer would select the birth flower right here from the variants section. The other option that you can do, though, is let's see, you said you're doing journals. The other option that you can do is use clip art. So if I come in here to my clip art, I've got some birth flowers loaded down here. So I can add this once as just one design. So we'll kind of blow that up bigger. And then down here underneath, I'll add in a name. Obviously set font, yada, 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 all that other stuff. So doing it this way, instead of selecting from the variant section, 
they're going to get, uh, you can either do it as icons or as a dropdown um, that the customer can then select from. So I'll let this finish generating here and we'll push this to Shopify and I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah, I think especially if you're selling on Shopify and uh, that's a really good way to do it. If you're selling on Etsy and wanting to do something like this and it's a design with one name and one flower, I think you're going to be better off adding it as separate variants because the customer is going to be able to select specifically which month they want. And then all they have to do in the personalization field is enter a name, which is a little bit simpler for the customer. Um, even if you wanted to do it the other way, though, on Etsy, you could still just have the customer enter. So it'd be like Chris October instead of just entering Chris. So I think either way would work well. But if I was selling it on Etsy, um, I would probably do it as individual variants and Shopify, probably six and one half a dozen in another. But especially if I was making several of them, I would do it this way because it's a little bit faster to create. So in this scenario... Uh, let's go view on Shopify. So here, when I come in to personalize, I'm going to be able to see my name as I enter it here. And then I'm going to see a list of all my flowers that I can select from. Uh, so right now I have this set on um, what we call it icons plus dropdown. If I wanted to instead show, since I only have 12, I could easily change this to my display as option here. Go to icons and hit update. And it may take a minute to update here, but we should be able to go to personalize. And now we have our 12 um, images here that we can go through and select from right there. So those would be your two options to, uh, to do that. Uh, yes, so on Etsy, you are limited to 10. What I would do is show um, show a mock-up of a couple different ones, and then I'd have one mock-up that showed a layout very similar to this right here, actually, that had the flower, and then underneath of it, I would list the month and the name of the flower. Um, so like underneath this, I would create an image that had uh, water lily July, so that they're able to see in Etsy um, what the birth flower is for each individual month, so they know what they're selecting and how that's going to kind of come through. Uh, let's see, saying I did screenshots of four on each picture, and it only took three of the images to show them. Yeah, that's a good way to do it, too. Yep, that would work. I would still probably want to put the name of the flower and that sort of thing. Some people are um, uh, either picky or really into, you know, what uh, what should actually be the birth flower. Or some people, you know, we're assuming they're buying this as for a birth flower, but maybe I'm just somebody that really likes roses. So I'm going to select the rose month, even though that's not necessarily my birth month. I just want a journal with a rose on it. So um, kind of gives them more information that way. All righty. I am not seeing any other questions and we are just over the one hour mark. So we'll leave it at that. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions throughout the week, feel free to reach out to support. We're happy to help. If you have any ideas or anything you'd like to see on next week's live stream, um, let us know that as well. And thank you, everybody, for your time today. I appreciate everybody jumping in and joining on and being a part of the community. So if you guys, uh, again, have any questions, let us know. Other than that, have a good rest of your week. Take care, everybody.